let's get back to the serious stuff. The 761st Tank Battalion, also known as the Black Panther Tank Battalion. One day, one battle. Although they did so much in World War II, I'm gonna talk right now just about a little piece of what they did. One of the 761st Tank Battalion was quoted as saying, two minutes in a battlefield is like a lifetime. And I think he's right. This is about Sergeant Theodore Teddy Windsor, 35 years old from Cleveland, Ohio, tank commander. And Sergeant William Willie McBurney, a gunner, 20 years old from New York. Corporal Leonard Smitty Smith, 20 year old loader from New York. And Tech 5 William Willie J. DeVore, 25 year old tank driver from Greenwood, South Carolina. World War II, the European theater. It was the dead of winter, 1944, just days before Christmas. The 761st were close to crossing over into Germany, ordered by General Patton to head north and into Belgium to recapture the town of Tillet. They had already endured fierce battle and massive casualties in Moivet Ville, Moyenvie, Vic Sur Sey, and in Metz. They made it through all those and Tillet, then headed east towards Bastogne. And now the four tankers were amidst the Battle of the Bulge. Their fighting reached a crescendo on January 9th, 1945, and they're about to encounter one of their toughest battles yet. On the way to Bastogne, they saw carnage that was unconceivable. The bodies of soldiers strewn about the roadsides and dead bodies behind every tree. The 761st were fighting not only the German panzers, but also exhaustion, trauma, and one of the worst winters in three decades. As their tank reached an open field, a German panzer was waiting, concealed by dense pine woods. And when their tank was halfway across the snow-covered field and fully exposed, the German tank opened fire. The tank commander, Sergeant Windsor, yelled for the gunner, Willie McBurney, to return fire with everything they had, while frantically directing the driver Willie J. DeVore to sharply execute specific maneuvers. The loader, Leonard Smitty Smith, rammed one shell after another as their Sherman tank fired back into the woods. Suddenly, a landmine exploded underneath their tank, bringing it to a screeching halt. The tank crew never saw the mine, which tore into the bottom of their tank. A barrage of artillery began falling all around them. They had to do something fast. The gunner, McBurney, knew the procedure but hesitated when he saw DeVore, who wasn't injured, but wouldn't move. Windsor shouted to McBurney, come on, get out of the damn tank or we're all dead. Smitty, McBurney, and Windsor escaped by diving out of the turret hatch underneath the tank and immediately felt the sting of the minus six degree temperature. The three tankers began to low crawl under a cloud of enemy fire. But where was the fourth tanker? They looked back and saw the driver, Willie DeVore, standing up in his seat but remaining motionless as if frozen in time. No doubt hesitant to move and give up any cover and concealment the tank may be offering. They shouted out his name, begging him to jump, but he didn't so much as blink. Moments later, they watched in horror as a 25-year-old was virtually decapitated by a direct hit of heavy artillery fire. The explosion ignited the tank's onboard artillery supply. Smitty openly wept as the flames geysered from the turret. McBurney grabbed Smitty and pulled him back. With no time to grieve, Smitty, McBurney, and Windsor continued their slow crawl across the open field, only to grievously pass by the bodies of infantrymen and other bodies, frozen solid in grotesque poses from the previous day's fight. He found himself face to face with a dead German soldier whose eyes were wide open, vivid, and clear blue, undoubtedly questioning, why am I here? Harshly realizing they're still in combat and aberrantly comprehending that they're still alive. With the 45 caliber submachine guns they were dragging along with them, Smitty, Windsor, and McBurney periodically returned fire at the well-concealed German infantrymen in their white-clad uniforms, while they, the 761st, in their green regulation uniforms, were an easy target against the freshly fallen snow. They somehow continued, Windsor led, followed by McBurney, with Smitty at the rear. They had gone about 300 yards when suddenly McBurney stopped. It was so cold it hurt to breathe, thought McBurney. Fingers too cold to pull the triggers of the submachine guns. The edge of the woods was still painfully a mile away. Smitty came up beside McBurney. Come on, man, think about the Savoy. We gotta get back there and do some more dancing. The Savoy was a legendary ballroom in Harlem. 
known for its big band roster and its polished oak floors. Just like in the movies, McBurney despondently uttered, you go on, but Smitty reiterated, we gotta get the hell out of here so we can get back and party, thinking they were gonna die out there in this hell on earth, thousands of miles from home. McBurney was thinking, Smitty must be out of his mind, but Smitty wouldn't back down and refused to leave him. We gotta get back to Savoy. That's the damn the Savoy. And he said, you must be crazy. You talking about the Savoy rolling and going down and these people trying to kill us. But that's what I would do. That, that took my, I didn't think about what they were trying to do. I just wanted to get away and say, I want to get back way to the Savoy. Saying anything he could just to keep their minds off their dire whereabouts. Exhausted, past the point of caring, McBurney simply wanted to lie there, close his eyes, and drift off into a deep sleep. But the persistence of Smitty prevailed. McBurney started moving again. Because of him, I kept going, said McBurney. They crawled for 5,000 yards as bullets continued falling around them. Smitty, McBurney, and Windsor negotiated miles of running, walking, and crawling. Meanwhile, a German Panzer zeroed in on them. Machine gun fire garnished the snow around them and explosions rearranged the landscape. The Panzer was closing distance, second by second, until, out of nowhere, a lone P-38 Lightning descended from the sky and destroyed the Nazi tank, finally allowing the men of the 761st to make it to the safety of the U.S. forces. The 761st would live to fight another day.